going to be talking about why allografts reject and what we can do about it. So there are three main components that are very important for us to discuss. Number one, what is unique about the transmitter organ? Number two, what is the immune system? What is its role in rejecting the allograft? And number three, how can we prevent this rejection from occurring? So starting with the transplanted organ. So when you do a transplant, uh, say a kidney, a lung, a liver, or a heart from known identical individuals, these organs are gonna carry foreign proteins. I see foreign proteins as a fingerprint unique to each individual organ. The problem that, about that is that these foreign proteins can be recognized by the immune system. There are many foreign proteins that could be uh, potentially different between individuals, but there's one group of uh, proteins that are very important. We call the HLA molecules or human leukocyte antigens. You're gonna hear more about this because we try to match this HLA between the donor and its recipient as much as we can to reduce the risk of rejection. So the transplant organ has this unique fingerprint and that what creates challenges. Why is this a challenge? So when we think about the immune system, the immune system is our army. It's our army that defends us against potential external threats. The threats can be a virus, can be a bacteria, or internal threats, such as a cancer. So one of the problems about this is that when you do a transplant, uh, you transplant an organ, is that this organ may carry these foreign proteins that are gonna be recognized as a threat to your own immune system, our army. And this threat then will trigger a response to get rid of this threat. And this is what happens if you, when you develop a rejection. This is our immune system trying to fight this transplant organ and getting rid of that. The immune system has two main branches. One branch of the immune system is able to recognize a potential threat and send a signal. That's our surveillance uh, uh, part of the immune system. And then you have the executors, our SWAT team. So that's the part of our army that's gonna go, identify the threat, and exterminate it, okay? So these are our soldiers. They're gonna use different types of weapons to try to deal with this threat. We have one type of rejection, it's called cellular, that involves cells that go to your transplanted organ and basically cause damage with local weapons, such as a hand grenade. And then you have a second group of uh, immune uh, cells that secrete antibodies that travel along your body until they find a target. Almost like a missile, but a guided missile. And these are called antibodies, and all, also antibody-mediated rejection. So these are the two forms of rejection that may occur when you're transplanting an organ that's not uh, self, it, that carries foreign proteins, and also your immune system that recognizes that as a foreign body. So, what can we do to prevent that in case of transplantation and make transplantation possible? So we use anti-rejection medications or immune suppressive drugs. So the principle is that we're gonna use a combination of medications that's gonna weaken the immune system, causes the immune system to be much less effective in mounting a response. The problem is that when you make your immune system weaker, it's also gonna make it weaker to fight an infection or fight cancer. So that's one of the complications about using those anti-rejection medications in the long term. The second group of complications has to do with toxicities. They're particular to the drug that we're dealing with. Some medications may be toxic to your kidney, some medications may cause diarrhea, some medications may cause you to have a tremor. So these are unique features of medications that we use. So where are we in terms of uh, success with uh, using our anti-rejection medications. I think we, we came a long way, but there's much more we have to do. We have to develop drugs that are gonna be safer, that won't have as many side effects as we're seeing currently. We also need to invest more in research so that instead of weakening the whole immune system, that we selectively weaken the part of the immune system that's attacking the transplanted organ, which is foreign uh, proteins. So can we do this? And the answer is yes. And there's something that we learned in the past 10 to 20 years about the immune system is that the immune system is not only formed by soldiers that go and fight against any potential threats, but we do have generals, we have regulators in that army that if we teach them the right way, we teach them to control the soldiers 
uh, against the specific threat, we may be able to be using our own immune system to control things, calm things down, and still be capable of fighting against infections or any potential threats such as inter internal threats such as a cancer. So what I tried to uh, explain to you in the past few minutes are three main components. What a transplant organ is and why is it foreign, considered a foreign body that may trigger the immune system. How the immune system has a hierarchy very similar to an army and we need to better use that concept so that we can potentially increase the number of generals and reduce the number of soldiers that recognize our transplanted organ as being a foreign, and that the current immune suppression, the suppressive, suppressive, suppressive drugs that we use, the anti-rejection medications, they keep the immune system much weaker just so that they don't have a rejection process. But at the same time, we need to use better and new medications that may have less toxicity to your own body and may prolong the life of the kidney or the other transplanted organ as long as possible. Thank you.